Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday service, our youth focused service. Thank Amen. the Lord for um, this is the day the Lord has made, and we're excited for, the, for what the Lord has for us. If we could all turn our attention to our opening video. All of us will reach a crossroads in life, a decision that has to be made. Some can be small and insignificant. Others seem like they could shape the course of our entire lives. How can we know the will of God? How can we correctly choose the path he has set out for us? And what if we make the wrong decision we spend sleepless nights and days filled with anxiety when we place these burdens upon ourselves. Often we become isolated, feeling completely alone in finding the right answer. Sometimes we're tempted to rush into a decision. Other times we'd rather delay indefinitely. But for those who call him Father, for those who believe in the power of his name, he provides everything we need to follow His will. He gives us His word as a compass and inspiration. Those who live according to scripture will always follow in His footsteps. He blesses us with wise counsel through His church and the leaders He has set in place. He hears our every prayer, granting peace and wisdom to those who ask. His very spirit dwells in us, a still small voice that guides from within our hearts. And in his perfect timing, he will open doors. He will clear the way forward. And no matter the path you choose, you are never alone. He will walk beside you and enfold you with his love from now until the end of eternity. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Decisions. Thank you for that video. Decisions. And, you know, when we made that decision to, to, to accept the Lord into our lives and to follow him, it was just the beginning. And um, we are, you know, it's a, a journey that is bigger than we can even imagine. And um, I'm going to, you can come in, uh, Saints, as I get ready to start the first song. And uh, I just wanted to, you know, our first song is What a Mighty God We Serve. And um, not yet, but um, this week in our Bible study, we were talking about Moses. And that discussion, uh, Bible study is always amazing. But, you know, Moses made a decision one day that he was going to follow the path the Lord had for him. And as he started on that journey, he, he said, Lord, I want to I wanna know, see your glory. And the Lord, you know, he is so big. And, you know, that, that passage where he, um, he asked the Lord to show him his glory, the Lord said, you know, God says, um, you can't handle it. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to pass by. And because you can't handle the bigness of me, I'm, just get under the rock here. Get hide, hide under this rock, the cleft. And, the, and not only, that's not enough, I'm still going to have to cover you with my hand. Mm -hmm. oh. And you know, <laughs> it's the Lord that puts that desire in us to know him better. Mm. When he puts that desire to know him better, and you find yourself praying, Lord, I want to know you better, watch out. <laughs> 
Because, you know, that song, that, that, that passage of scripture, he hideth my uh, life, my soul in the cleft of the rock. I always thought it was about the Lord protecting me from the evil one and from forces that were against me. But that was actually to shield me so that he can give me more of him hmm. as I was able to handle it. And so now the Lord has given me a new prayer. He's, and this prayer came from him. I'm praying, Lord, increase my capacity for you. Mm. Because it's, you know, I, you know, I was worshiping the other day, and I was like, Lord, I'm so glad. I hope the neighbors don't call the police. <laughs> but the Lord's presence was so palpable in the praise. So when, you know, it's bigger than we can even imagine. So God is, is working. I see him working in, in all of us, in our youth, as they're excited about worshiping the Lord and being available for him. It's going to get big. God has so much for us. Amen. We can't even imagine. So Amen. as we stand together and we sing, what a mighty God. It's bigger than we can even imagine today. So sing with us. You can start the track. What a mighty God we serve is one of our faves here. Please stand if you're able. You can even put your hands together. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Let angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Let angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, yeah. All the angels sing. Heaven and earth proclaim. Lift your voice and sing. He's a mighty God. All the angels sing. All the angels sing. Heaven and earth proclaim. Lift your voice and sing. He's a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Let angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. All the angels say, heaven and earth, heaven and earth proclaim. What do they say? Lift your voice and sing, he's a mighty God. All the angels, all the angels sing, heaven and earth proclaim, lift your voice and sing, he's a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Let angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty 
God. We serve let angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Let angels. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Let angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. words mighty just don't seem enough when I think of what he's done he saved me keeps me provides hallelujah gives me joy when I'm in even through my sorrow he gives me joy I tell you he is awesome he is mighty and he is a way maker has he made a way out of no way you no, know, if we start talking yes. about the ways he's made, we are going to be in here all day long. We're celebrating our graduates today. Yes. And, you know, hallelujah. I have to tell you, there was a time, hallelujah, I didn't know how our kids were going to be able to go to college. Hmm. I didn't see a way. Hmm. But God made a way. Yes. So, you know, think about the ways that he's made as we sing the song. And if, well, we're singing parts too, but if we're singing your favorite part, you just sing right along with us. Amen. Waymaker. Mm -hmm. Miracle worker. Who you are. He's a way maker. 
way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 have a witness. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That to us and so much more. That is who you are. That is who you are. You've been my light in darkness. That is who you are. That is who you are. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see in your work. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work. And even when, even when I don't feel it, you work. Hallelujah! You never stop. You never stop working. Never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when, even when I don't see it, you work. And even when I don't feel it, even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Just our voices. Mm -hmm. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Welcome to Valley Bush Youth Sunday Service. We want to give you a special welcome to all of our first time viewers and visitors. We are happy that you have chosen to worship with us here at Valley Bush. Those at home may click on the link below to access our first time visitors card. Please take a few minutes to complete it to help, to help us pray for you as well as to notify you of future Valley Book events. You may also find this form on our streaming page after the service. Um, we have three options for viewing our Sunday service virtually. You can go to the website and click onto the streaming tab. You can connect directly to the stream via vvccstream.com or you can go to our Facebook page, VVCC Online, to connect. Praise reports, prayer requests, and sick and shut in reports. If you have any information about a member who has become ill or if you would like others to pray for you, please complete a prayer request e-card located under the pastor's corner tab or on the streaming tab on our website, and we will be happy to lift you up. Also, join us, this, join us every Wednesday at 8 p.m. for our power hour of prayer. The phone number and access code are listed on our website's homepage and today's bulletin. For offering for your convenience, you may contribute 
on our website through our giving tab or mail your donation to our office address as listed on the back of the bulletin. You may also see today's bulletin for new ways to donate. Access our bulletin. Please reference this morning's bulletin for our scripture reading and more complete information about the Valley Brook happenings. You may access the bulletin by clicking on the streaming tab and click on the link labeled Virtual Bulletin. Continuing in July as part of weekly Power Hour Prayer that takes place every Wednesday, we will focus specifically on two, minutes per, two ministries per month for prayer. Anyone who is part of the featured ministry or supportive of it is invited to join us. The men's ministry will be, was featured on July 12th, and on July 26th, the youth ministry will be featured. You may find the call and information for the hour of prayer included in today's bulletin and our website's homepage. For those who are not already aware, our regular Sunday services are both live streamed and recorded as well. There are two video cameras in the sanctuary, both of which are occasionally used to capture reactions of the congregation. For those who wish to not be seen on camera, it is recommended that you be seated on the left side of the sanctuary. The video technicians have been instructed to avoid showing that area. Women's ministry, please see today's bulletin for information on the upcoming dinner and a play at Toby's Dinner Theater. Um, please receive Akasha Archer, who will lead us in today's scripture reading and offertory prayer. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'll be reading from Psalms 121. I'll say amen when you get there. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you. By day, nor the moon by night, mm -hmm. the Lord will keep you from all harm. Yes. He will watch over your life. Yes. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, yes. both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for always being there with me, for walking with me done so much together. <laughs> Thank you for the fun. <laughs> All the moments with me. You color with me. You put bubbles with me. You do so much with me. I thank you for that. And all the breakfast and lunch you're getting me through all my days of work. Yes. I can feel challenging and getting everybody through those days. Lord, I pray that all of us get through our week. Yes, Lord. That you will guide us through all of challenges. Yes, Lord. And everybody who is at work, that you will guide them, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for having us all. And I pray that the message today will fill us all. In yes. Jesus' name I pray. We love you. Amen. 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 Amen.
believe major said every praise <laughs> every praise right. but to sing that song hallelujah oh glory to god that was beautiful beautiful we just wanted to t take some time to acknowledge and celebrate our graduates our 2023 graduates so praise the lord hallelujah And so if you are here, I hate to embarrass you, but if you're here, I'm going to ask you um, when we call your name. If you feel comfortable, you can come here. If not, I'll bring a present to you, okay? Whatever you, whatever you like. That's why we're here. So in your bulletin, I just wanted to um, call out our graduates. They are absolutely amazing. And God has already been at work in them, um, accomplishing his will, and he's just getting started. And even with us, he's just getting started. Okay. All righty. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. So Major is going to help me with the bags. He's going he's gonna to take the bags for me. All right, so our first graduate that we're celebrating is Alicia Grace Clanton. Yeah. Hallelujah. She is not here, but her parents are going to come stand up here. Oh, sorry, Alicia. Alicia Grace Clanton. 
Praise the Lord. And you can give them whatever bag you want. So Alicia, she was a double major. Double major in journalism and policy studies with a minor in Amer African American studies. Magna cum laude. So we celebrate. Hallelujah. Parents, do y'all want to say anything? No. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Way to go, Alicia. All right. And now we have Maya St. Hilaire. Maya, come on down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Maya graduated from high school, Mount Hebron High School. Congratulations. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to give her a hug because she, she, I remember she was... Um, in middle school, my middle school class when I was teaching Sunday school. And I still you know, see those bright little eyes that I saw back, way back then. Thank you. Wonderful. Hallelujah. And we have Nina St. Hilaire. Saint Hilaire. Nina! Woohoo! Yeah. All right. Congratulations, Nina. Graduated from college with a Bachelor of Science de degree in biology. Cum laude. But that's not all. <laughs> Graduate um, Bachelor of Science degree also in anthropology. Cum laude. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we celebrate you, Nina. Congratulations. Oh, my goodness. How awesome. And last not my, but not least, Alicia Sarah Weatherford. Come on down. Strut on down here. Yes. Alicia graduated from high school. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hallelujah. From Wild Lake High School, local. And I got to give her a hug, too, because she was one of my middle school students, too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And what stays in middle school class stays, uh, it says it stays in middle school class, so... Thank the Lord for that. Um, and now we are going to, um, um, we have a special reception afterwards for our celebrating our graduates. We will ask you to join us in the back um, for that special reception. Yeah. All right. All right, worship team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> how's everybody doing today? <laughs> yes. Uh, so I can't blame my nerves now because I might lose the other leg. I'm joking. Um, I just, this song means a lot to me. And in college, especially the theater arts department, there is what they call the stages in acting where the first stage you prepare for the script. The second stage is you've already embodied the script, so you know what to do. And then the third stage is acting. That's acting. And that's movies. And you see the seriousness we put into it. Belay when we talk of God. Mm. When we call his name, we're calling his name for a purpose. And when you call his name, you <laughs> better prepare because he will turn and when he turns to give you his attention <laughs> and you are not ready he would wait because he loves you mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm not saying he's going to leave you but you should be ready so this song right when you sing it because i know most of you know it when you sing it you know you are talking to god mm. <laughs> know that you are telling him that he knows your name mm. And the reason why you are telling him, each and every one of you have gone through a battle you have that tried to turn you. You've gone through a giant that tried to defeat you. Mm. In fact, we all beat COVID. Yeah. That's a giant on its own. So when you sing this song, don't be in the script stage. Mm. Mm. Be in the acting stage because you are ready. You've already asked him. That means you wrote the script by asking him. 
Are we ready? Mm. Amen. Amen. trust you with my life, yeah.
something in your victory because your power is within me no giant can defeat me because you hold my hand I'm fire. no fire can burn me no battle can turn me no mountain can stop me because you hold my hand and i'm walking in your victory because your power is within me no giant can defeat me because you hold my hand you hold my hand Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Good. Everybody hear me okay? <laughs> so, uh, wow, this is, um, last time I came up here, it was, uh, it was shocking. But this time, you know, coming up and looking around and looking at everybody's faces, man, this is, um, you all are giving me strength today. You all really are giving me strength today. This is uh, way different. But, um, um, uh, a couple things I wanted to say before I forget, because I tend to forget things. I'm getting old, I'm 54, so I don't know why I'm speaking on youth Sunday. But, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but um, a couple things about this worship service beforehand. I, I got so wrapped up in it. It was so great that, um, you know, I was kind of like, man. And then when it just ended, I was like, whoa, that was quick. <laughs> so, so into it. I mean, this, our worship team just does a, just amazing job. Hands to y'all. Hands to y'all. That song, Chris, and Chris said before that song, and the singing that, the singing that y'all did, but he knows my name. Yeah. My God. Yeah. That just amazes me. Yeah. That just amazes me. Yeah. He knows my name. Yeah. He knows each and every one of y'all's name. Yeah. And not only that, he doesn't just know your name, he loves you. Yeah. And that's what I'm hoping that... Um, I can confer to you guys today about how, in my testimony, and how I came to faith in him. Yeah. How much he showed he loved me. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, Akasha, that, <laughs> yeah. that prayer, yeah. I mean, you made my job easy, because <laughs> to have a youth come up here and give that testimony and that prayer, yeah. what, do you, what more do I need to say? I mean, you know. <laughs> What more do I need to say? That was, I mean, with the emotion that you could, you could see yeah. and experience yeah. with her, just to see a youth do that is, um, right. this world is, when you walk outside, you watch the news and turn on TV, listen to the radio, everything seems so bad. Yeah. But that right there, yeah. just let you know that we're on the upswing. Yeah. <laughs> God is in control. 
Christ has his followers everywhere. 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 We not, might not be marching in the streets. You know, we might not be on the radio every day. You know, we might not be running for president. <laughs> but we are everywhere. everywhere. That's we're talking amongst each other. We're talking amongst other people. Let them know that Jesus is here. Yes, He's here every day. He's in every, every emotion. He's in every moment. Yes. Hallelujah. He's in every, in every one of us. Mm-hmm. The spirit is alive yes. and well. So, oh, I have some notes because even though I give my testimony, I have to have notes for it. <laughs> you know, I should be able to just tell what happened to me via memory, but like I said, I'm 54. And, you know, so. And <laughs> I have my days that I feel young and I have more days that I don't. But um, uh, first of all, let me pray because um, I need prayer. Father God, uh, please, please, please let this um, testimony that I give today on what you did for me. (laughs) What I didn't even ask for, but you did for me. Um, Be a help to the youth and whoever else is listening to it. Um, My hope is that a lot of people identify with it. Um, and also my hope is that uh, some will maybe learn from it or get encouraged by it. Um, but whatever it is, Lord, your will, yes. not mine, please remove me right now. Mm-hmm. And you speak through me and through my experience. My God, what an amazing God you are. I praise you, Father. I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, there's a couple things that, you know, uh, I wanted to start off with um, kind of as a, a background theme. So if you think like a, like a painting, this is like the, the canvas. Um, so, I'm, you know, just try to keep these things in mind as I go through my my testimony that these were things going on that I was in some ways aware of, probably not, but in most cases not aware of that were going on that Christ and God was aware of um, as he was moving me toward the relationship with him, that I was just going through my life just <laughs> just being me as a teenager say, I was living my life. Um, first is, is that People possess the full spectrum of emotion and morality. And by that I mean each person, this is not my opinion, <laughs> each person possesses the full spectrum. Mm-hmm. Not what just you can imagine you can do or feel, but every person possesses the full spectrum of morality and emotion. Uh, hopefully that makes sense later on. Second thing is, is uh, there's a war going on, y'all. <laughs> Pastor Dan, I think he's been preaching on it all month. There's a war going on. The more we, the sooner we recognize it, and the more we incorporate the, the thought and the aw- awareness of it in our everyday thoughts, in our minds, in our hearts, the better off we are. God's fighting for your soul at this very moment. At this very moment. There's something going on in your life, in your heart, in your soul, that God is fighting the devil and also fighting against your free will. You know, your, your fallen nature as a human. Mine too. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, he, I can tell you, he's constantly fighting against my humanity. You know, we all are Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve was a representation of all of us. We can't look back on that history and say that, well, that was Adam and that was Eve, and I wouldn't have done that. Because they did it, we would have done it. <laughs> that's, that's who we are. We're Adam and Eve. We're Cain and Abel. Abraham and David. 
Paul and Peter. We're all those people. And that's also what I mean by each one of us has a full spectrum of emotion and morality. We look throughout the Bible and just about every example in the Bible besides Christ um, exhibited some what we wouldn't expect of those people to be Bible jargonauts. So um, until you decide to join the Lord's side in battle, it's almost like you're fighting for the other side. Um, so I just want to make sure the youth understand that. I'm not trying to put pressure on you, and I'm, in fact, this testimony is not to put pressure on any youth out there. Um, I know when I was young, I hated <laughs> going to church and hearing people always telling me, you know, have you accepted Christ yet? You know, are you, you know, have you done this yet? Have you done that yet? I'm like, look, I want to live my life. <laughs> you know, I wasn't ready. Like in that, um, in that video uh, that Pastor Dan um, has to do with um, Deion Sanders talking about running from the Lord. Yeah. Running. I did that. I was running. I was running from him. I thought there was so much he wanted to take from me. I wasn't ready to give up yet. And I was running. I mean, sprinting. <laughs> so I wanted to do everything I was big enough and bad enough to do. I was excited about it. And that's fine. You know, we all have to live our lives. So, but like I said, until you decide to join his side of the battle, you're essentially fighting for the other side. And, you know, just understand that. It's kind of like, when you don't vote, you're voting for a person that you don't want in office. Same thing, same concept, same concept. So okay, so I just wanted to um, say those things as kind of a, a backdrop. Um, so getting to my testimony, in or around 1977, 78, somewhere around there, um, I'm unclear what year it was. I just know about what age I was. It was seven or eight years old. And um, first, I'm gonna tell you, this is gonna sound crazy. It really is. You know, I hope it. I hope you guys. Uh, well, I'm not trying to convince you that it happened, but it did in my mind. Between me and God, this happened. I was first exposed to God. Well, I first met God in a trash can in the back of my house. <laughs> 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 we lived in Woodlawn, Maryland, a suburb outside of Baltimore, just across the line. And I was playing with some friends that had just moved into the neighborhood. And my friends, until this group of friends showed up, these two brothers, um, were pretty wholesome. I mean, we, you know, we all had pretty wholesome fun. Everybody, you know, we weren't testing our parents as far as, you know, their authority and um, you know, we were, we had a pretty good morality in our friendship, friendship group. But these two guys came in and they were cussing up a storm every day. <laughs> and, um, and I was hanging out with them. And I started to um, take on those habits. And so getting to this day in 77, 78, um, we were playing hide and go seek in my yard. And so I was going to hide in this trash can. I, for, the, for older folks, you probably remember the aluminum yeah. trash cans with the, the clankily, rattly top. And they were filthy inside. We I mean, looked decent outside, but they were filthy inside. But I got it in my mind that I was going to hide in this trash can. And at seven or eight years old, you know, average height, trying to get into that trash can was a challenge. So, yeah, <laughs> smell it too. And, um, and uh, so I hurt myself trying to get in. I kind of snagged my leg on the edge trying to get in. And I laid into God. <laughs> Curse words and all. Laid into a God I did not know. I didn't even want to acknowledge him up to that point. But somehow that was his fault. <laughs> even though in my mind he didn't exist. And I'm going to tell you. As soon 
as I finished my words, it wasn't an auditory thing, but he instilled the truth of his existence in my heart in that moment. And the understanding that I had is that I am God and you are not. For an eight-year-old. I've always remembered it. I've, I've only told my kids and my wife about it. But I've always remembered it throughout my life. And there's points in my life, as you see, that I conveniently forgot. Or I ignored it. But, um, but that was my first exposure to him. And so I kind of knew that, uh, that he existed. Um, well, I knew he existed, but um, <laughs> I just kind of ran from it, you know? Even with that, that direct interaction, I was still running from him. Um, before that, you know, my parents would, you know, take us to church. We would go to church on Sundays, and uh, a lot of my family went to the same church, or at least my father's side of the family, and um, I would go to church and play around with the other kids and ignore the messages and ignore the praise songs and all of that. Um, but, you know, um, I went. And, um, you know, the Lord let me be. I'm sure he was working on my behalf, as he does all of us. But he let me be. So, um, One thing I didn't get as a kid was <clears throat> an understanding. I just didn't understand um, the Trinity concept. And I probably didn't get that until I became you know, full on adult. Um, and I didn't understand who Jesus was. You know, I kind of, like I said, I, I, I knew there was probably a God, um, but that was no concern of mine. <laughs> um, but I certainly didn't know who Jesus was, and I certainly didn't understand that I needed him. I was fine. I was having a good time. I was a kid. You know, we moved from that house where the trash can was to, uh, well, to another situation I'll talk, to, talk about in a minute. But, uh, but we stayed there a short period of time, and then we moved to another house. We had a pool, trees around the pool. It was my dream. <laughs> I was having a good time, <clears throat> having a great time. And um, so I didn't need God. I didn't need to know who Jesus was. I didn't need. I didn't need Jesus. I was fine. I was a good person. You know, I wasn't doing anything. I hadn't gotten arrested, and I hadn't. Uh, I hadn't even gotten suspended from school. I was doing good. Lived my best life. <laughs> so, um, from there we get to high school. Um, there's this, this situation that happened when I was in high school that has stuck with me for a long time. As I was getting to the close of high school, started driving, you know, hanging out more. You know, when you start driving, you can go do more things and get exposed to more things. Hanging around in Baltimore City, <sighs> seeing some gruesome things happen there. Um, I was with my best friend. We were riding in his car. Uh, coming up Liberty Road, never forget it. And there's a young lady in the back seat who was a friend of ours that um, she just came out of nowhere and asked, do you guys believe in God? <laughs> out of nowhere. And you know, we're just listening to music, having a good time. And both of us turned around and looked at her and immediately my Cogs in my mind started going. <laughs> and I, um, I denied him. <laughs> I looked at my best friend who was driving, and I knew what his answer was going to be because he and I had had that conversation before. And I told her, no. I don't believe in God. Why would I believe in God? Who does that? <laughs> and I knew that I was lying. But it was more important to me to have the agreement of my best friend. <laughs> that was more important. But you know, that was okay too because I was immature at that time. God knew that, Jesus knew that. 
I was immature. I wasn't, I wasn't in a place to accept his love. I wasn't in a place to reach out and grab the hand that he always had extended to me. Wasn't in that place. So uh, with God's ultimate grace and mercy, he probably, I'm sure, let that roll off his back. So um, also around that time, and I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about this or not, but also around that time, um, I met a guy in high school. He wasn't really a friend of mine. He was a, there were a bunch of people that moved out to Baltimore County from the city in a project. Around that time, they were destroying the projects in the city and stuff like that, so they were moving out. So uh, there was a group of people who came out to our high school. This guy named Greg. Um, Greg was, um, and if he was here today, I thought about inviting him, but if he was here today, he would tell you. He was a thug. <laughs> He was a thug, and he lived a thug's life, even in high school. Didn't finish high school because the cops came and picked him up in our senior year at lunchtime for something that happened. Picked up a bunch of people from high school at that time, at lunch period, throughout a week or so's time. But he started his journey, which was a lot different than mine. Um, just really quick, you know, just, and I, and I say this because I kind of want to give, this goes along the lines of people possessing the full spectrum of emotion and morality. And so people that we think are bad can inherently be tremendous people. <laughs> tremendous people. So Greg went to jail before he finished high school. He was in jail for 25 years. I had the recent experience of talking to a, um, on Father's Day, talking to a, a correctional officer. He was, he was retired, but he had been a correctional officer for like 38 years. And I got to ask all the questions I had about jail, prison. And it is worse than I ever thought. That is a whole nother society. That is a whole nother reality. A whole nother reality. You can't even imagine what goes on in there and what the social structure is in there. He was there for 25 years and he was 17 when he went in there. So he, in jail, he um, got addicted to drugs. He was shot and stabbed before he went to jail. I think the total once, I think the total was somewhere around shot 17 times, stabbed 14 times. He lived a life. But Greg today is director for Catholic, Catholic Charities, Safer Streets Program. So he came out of jail, found the Lord. I don't know if it was in jail or out. Found the Lord. And look at him now. <laughs> Director. So he started off in um, going down the streets after Freddie Gray situation. He went to the neighborhood that Freddie Gray was from. And he said, you know what? We've got to do something about this gun violence in the streets of Baltimore. So he started his program. He and a couple of guys that he knew from that neighborhood started walking the streets. And their only goal at that time was to not change everybody's hearts and minds, because you know, that was too big of a task to do, but to, um, to de-escalate disagreements to where they wouldn't use guns, but they would fight it out. And you got to start somewhere, right? right? So he did that, and he turned that, he turned that into, there's over 90 people and employment under him. Wow. Walking the streets of Baltimore. And these people come from these neighborhoods. Mm. These aren't people like me coming in trying to tell people, you should do these things. You know? <laughs> They're not going to listen to me. They're going to listen to Greg because he's, he lived that life. Mm -hmm. you know? They're going to listen to the other people from those neighborhoods because they lived that life. Mm -hmm. 
But these are people that if we rode down in Baltimore City today, if they don't have safer street shirts on, we probably look at them and say, oof, I'm gonna lock my door. You know, some bad folks around here. But these folks are tremendous, tremendous. I dare to say, biblical level tremendous, doing things that none of us would think to do. I don't even want, want to walk down the street in some of these neighborhoods in Baltimore, but these guys live in those streets. And they're paid well enough to move out. But they care about these people. They care enough to put their life online every day. So anyway, um, that was kind of a, a branch because I wanted to kind of give a comparison. It was just another testimony of somebody that it just shows what God can do in your life for the youth, for the youth. Those things that you've done that your parents don't know about or things that have happened to you your parents don't know about, the Lord was there with you the whole time. Hallelujah. He's well aware. You can't hide it from him. You don't need to because he still loves you. He still wants you. He still wants the relationship with you every, much, every bit as much as he did the day you were born. You were fresh and new and had not sinned yet. So like that first day. <laughs> so, 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 just want to make sure you guys recognize that. So, um, so next, getting back to my testimony. I went off to college after high school, and um uh, I did everything that, like I said, I was big enough and bad enough to do. It was, I had a good time, but it was, it was a shame. <laughs> you know? It was a shame. My wife can tell you, we met in college. <laughs> I was, um, I did a lot of stuff, but I wasn't the worst, not at all. You know, but, um, but I was determined to have my fun. I originally went away to school in Connecticut and um, joined my fraternity and, uh, and went wild, really. But you know, I had a friend I met in my first semester, the first week, uh, named Eric Waterson, my best friend to today. He was deeply seated in the Lord. In freshman year in college, away from home, his parents three, four hours away. <laughs> um, we would go and party, and I would always invite Eric. Come on, Eric, we're going to hang out. Go have some fun, man. Live it up a little. Loosen up. <laughs> yeah, I was that one. <laughs> I was that one. <laughs> and, um, and Eric would say, you know, no, nah, man. Not. Come on, Eric. You're boring, man. You're boring me. No, nah, man. Mm -mm, I'm good. I'll stay here. I was like, okay. And I would go have a great time and come back and tell Eric at lunch the next day, you know, how much he missed. And, uh, and Eric's like, that's cool. That's cool. I always wish I was more like Eric. Now that I'm 54, well, before that. <laughs> when, uh, when I was fighting on the wrong side of this war, when I learned that I was fighting on the wrong side of this war, I wished that I was more like Eric. Mm -hmm. Able to have the maturity and the foresight and able to reach out and grab the hand of the Lord while he was reaching out to me. Life would have been so much more richer. Yeah. Is that grammatically correct? Probably not. But um, so um, but Eric always kind of kept me grounded. You know, so there was only so much I was going to do. Because I always knew, you know, well, I just, I just, there was just something about the way Eric was that I envied. And there was, so there was this conflict in me. This God I knew existed that he had a relationship with and that he was obedient to at that time. 
Um, and I would ask myself, why can't I be obedient like that? You know? And then I'll go off and party and forget. <laughs> As one does sometimes. So, um, what happened to me and, um, in college was, as I was doing everything I was big enough and bad enough to do, I got arrested. Possession of marijuana was with a friend of mine. Should not have been there, but it was my decision. And nobody, I could blame no one but me being in that position. Fortunately, it was just possession. Um, the guy I was with in his car was telling me while we were sitting in the cell that, oh man, if they had, you know, if this was early in the day, we would really be facing some charges. <laughs> so um, when, the, when the policemen were taking me to the booking center, um, my first question for them, once I knew I was getting arrested, my first question for them was, will my parents know about this? That was what I was concerned about. Um, and once, you know, I was 19 at that time, and so he said no. He asked me how old I was, and I'm 19. He's like, no, your parents don't know anything that you don't tell them. And so um, I sat back in the seat and was like, oh, OK. All right, let's go. <laughs> I don't know why that was the way I re responded to that. But in that moment, I said to myself, OK, well then, the God I know exists from that trash can is going to have to take care of me, no matter what happens. And that is when I started my road to pursuing him. Wow. Sitting in that, cell, in that cell that night, I was only there for a few hours. I don't make a big deal out of it, it was. But <laughs> um, sitting in that cell, though, uh, that's all I could think about was, OK, God, now I'm ready. Mm -hmm. You know, and God's like, about time. We had to kind of go some extremes, but all time. And um, so I went through that whole process. You know, got out that night. I spent, my, my trial date was, I think, three months from that date or somewhere like that. And that was traumatic because you don't know. I went through two lawyers um, because none of them could tell me that I wasn't going to serve any time for this. None of them would definitively say it. And when you don't know what your future is going to be like, <laughs> like they say, there's no atheists in the trenches. Everybody, sorry about that, everybody is, everybody understands that the Lord exists and that they need him when you don't know what's going to happen in your life next. When you know there is something horrendous looming over you for three months. So, um, God looked out for me, though. Um, wound up getting a good lawyer. He told me beforehand, probably, a, I, I, I found this lawyer maybe a week before the trial. He knew all the judges were that were going to that could possibly be there that day, who what the schedule was, and it kind of made me feel a little bit better. And he said that, um, you know, most likely you won't. Can't guarantee it. Lord, the judge can have a bad day today and that day. <laughs> made me feel a little bit better, but. I was on that course, now turning around and walking towards the Lord at that point. Had my trial date, got off uh, with community service, and all of that that goes along with that. So he saved me. He saved me. My life would have been so much different if he had not stepped in and saved me. Um, and I learned throughout that, pro through that process that I could not control myself. I learned what my humanity is and the impact my humanity has on my life and my decisions. And that my humanity and the evil one's propensity to use my humanity against me was going to destroy me, and that was his goal. 
I was helping him achieve his goal to destroy me. <laughs> when God was giving me every opportunity, when I look back on it, every opportunity, you know, I had no reason to do things I was doing. You know, I didn't, I didn't come up with a bluff, rough background. We had food to eat. You know, we had friends and family galore, cookouts at the house, swimming in the summertime. Ah, it, was, it was fantastic. But my humanity. So, um, so then, once I got through the situation with my arrest, um, I started to be very interested in going to church, <laughs> as one does when that kind of thing happens. And I wanted to learn about this God that introduced himself to me. I wanted to learn about him. I wanted to understand more about him and why he saved me. Why me? Why me? There were people in that, in that uh, courthouse that day that went to jail for the same offense that I had. They went to jail for however long it was. It was six months or whatever. Still, <laughs> they went to jail. They had a record. So why me? Well, one thing I want to say about that, too, is that God wants a relationship, and God pursues a relationship which eat with each one of us individually. Mm -hmm. He's not looking, to, he, he doesn't approach us as a group, and we're just a number in that group. So his plan for us is different. Yes. So the people that went to jail that day, that does not mean that God forsake them right. and save me. That's right. well, it. it just means that we had different paths. Yes. Yes. That's all that means. I was no better. I was no better. We all have the full spectrum of emotion and morality. Yeah. Our decisions, moment to moment, is what dictates what part of that spectrum we're on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? But then it gets to be more than that once you have a relationship with Christ. Because when Christ gets involved, he does amazing things, which I find out much later on in life. Because even though, what was this, 1990 or 91, somewhere around there, when I started to pursue God, I was still years away from understanding who Christ was. It's a, I'm, I'm a stubborn person. It takes me a long time to learn things, as my family will tell you. <laughs> I just can't get it through my thick skull sometimes. And, uh, and even though I was walking towards the Lord, that's why I say I was walking, because I didn't turn around and start sprinting towards the Lord. I turned around and started walking, shuffling in some places, you know, like, ah. So, um, so I started getting involved in church and um, joined the men's chorus. My father was on the men's chorus, and, you know, as I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, my heart's opening up to us, towards God, I started envying my father. I was like, Wow. You know, like, that's awesome. I mean, he's up there singing, and my father was happy. I can say, I know my father, and I know when he's happy. <laughs> and he was happy up there singing in the men's choir. And then it was like this, just for me, as a young man, seeing all of these young, middle-aged, and old men singing to the Lord. And having been in that church for a while, knowing some of them, and knowing that, you know, they're real people. They're not, they're not, they weren't people who are always Christian, I guess I'll put it that way. You know what I mean? Speak Christianese and, you know, they never did anything wrong. And, you know, <laughs> they were people. In fact, one of them I became friends with, he was big time into guns. He invited me to the gun range. We would go to the gun range after church. I always kind of felt like, you know, there's a little humanity side of me. It's kind of that side smirk like, <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> you know, I haven't converted yet. But he was a real person. But 
at the gun range, on the way to the gun range, on the way back from the gun range, we would talk about God. <laughs> we would talk about God. He was a tavernite, right? Tavernite. <laughs> it was in his heart and it was real. There was no mistaking. It was real. And as, you know, I like to say out in the secular circles, he was real. <laughs> you know, he was a real person, if you know what I mean. So, um, um, so throughout that, I got to know more about God. But I, what I was missing was an understanding of the Bible. I tried reading it. In my heart, I loved God. I learned and I realized what all he had done for me, and I loved him. I mean, I felt it. I would be in the car driving and having conversations with him, and I fell in love with God. It was, and I learned, it was way better than anything I experienced before that. It was, external things can surround your heart maybe with happiness, but God fills your heart with happiness, contentment, and joy. Everything that you've heard is true. It is absolutely true. But um, um, so um, I tried and tried and tried to read the Bible. I tried several um, versions of it. it. Just wasn't sinking in. I was just reading words. And nothing even jumped out of me as interesting for some reason. But I couldn't get far because I would read certain things and I just, like, okay, I don't, it's just not doing anything for me. And um, so, but I still had this relationship with God and I continued on from there. So, get to my mid 20s, married at this point, and my wife and I decided to join a church out in PG County. We lived out there at the time. And I thought I had it, though. I thought I was saved. Until we walked down the aisles, you know, in traditional churches, especially Baptist churches, you know, there's the, the call to the altar. And I answered that call to the altar. But I was, in my mind, I'm already saved. I'm, I'm just going to join the church. You know, this is, you know, I'm hoping they don't turn me around and say, yeah, this brother got saved today. Because I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I'm already saved now. You know, <laughs> I'm just trying to join your search. So, so, um, <laughs> so <laughs> thankfully they didn't do that. Uh, but they took us back to a little back room, and we had one person that, you know, coupled up with each one of us. And my wife joined with me. So I remember us sitting in rows of chairs just like this. And this gentleman had me sitting down facing him. My wife was on the other side of me facing the person that was talking to her. And he asked me, are you saved? I was like, oh, absolutely. Absolutely, I'm saved. He's like, well, how do you know? And I said, I believe in God. What kind of question is that? You know? <laughs> I'm getting upset. Like, you know, <laughs> what kind of question? Why are you questioning me? <laughs> you know? I'm saved just like you. I'm as good as you are. The nerve you have. He said, I said, he said, wrong answer, brother. And then I started to panic. <laughs> Panic set in. I, I was like, what? I'm searching my Rolodex now. I'm like, okay, what's, this, what's the answer to this question? Did I miss something? I've been going to church for the last five years, like every Sunday. How can I not know the answer to this question? And so I guess he saw the wheels moving in my head, and I didn't have the answer, so he gave it to me. He said, you know you're saved because you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you recognize that you need him. And you invite him into your life and your heart to take over. And for the Holy Spirit to come into you and help guide you the rest of your life. I don't know if he said all that. But he, said, <laughs> he you know, pretty much gave me that answer. And I was like, oh, yeah, right, right, yes. Yes. I'm saved knowing that I was not. I learned in that moment I was not saved. I loved God, but I was not saved. God was not done 
<laughs> with all the gifts he had for me. I would be content, I think, if I never knew the difference. Just having that love relationship with God. He was that great. It's not about that much of a difference of anything I've ever experienced. So then I had to learn. I got to go figure out this Jesus Christ thing now. <laughs> Who is Jesus Christ? I mean, I knew he was the son of God, but I didn't really know, and I didn't know him. So I needed to figure that out. So then I started asking God, you know, who is Jesus Christ? How do I get to know him? Introduce me to him. And I started to, when the name came up in church, I started to pay more attention to it. I was like, wait a minute, I got a lot more to figure out here. And uh, as I paid more attention to it, it started to make more sense and all that, but I still wasn't sure if I was getting it. But we left that church and went to another, and I wound up getting into a men's group. One of the younger pastors just approached me one day and said, I got a small group of guys. I want you to just come hang out with us. You know, we sit and, you know, and I was like, is it a Bible study? Because I, I wasn't at that much, at that time, that interested in Bible study. And I was like, but then I was like, you know, but I really need to start learning this Bible, understanding it, because this is probably where the answer to Jesus is. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I said, okay, he said, so what we do is we sit and we have dinner at my house and we talk, we talk through stuff. I was like, oh, that is interesting to me. I, you know, being able to talk this thing out and, and ask the questions I have in my mind that I'm afraid to ask in the church. Um, was interesting to me. That was something I really wanted to do, so I was excited. And I went, and through discussions with five or six other guys, every Thursday night, I think it was, and then also going through scriptures with them, it started making sense. And what was the real catalyst to making sense to me, for the Bible making sense to me, was a book, and I don't want to mess the name of it up, so I want to look at it in my note here. The book is called Bible Doctrine by a guy by the name of Wayne Grudem. I don't know if any of you ever read it or anything, but for me, trying to learn what this relationship with Christ is and God and who, who they are and what they mean to me, really, this book was the key. It unlocked the Bible. And then I couldn't get enough of the Bible. <laughs> couldn't stop reading it. Couldn't I, I, oh my gosh, it was so much in there that blew my mind that now I understood. And the words, I hate to be cliche, but the words came alive. It was electric. It was the best way I guess I could put it. It was it was, it was like, I don't know. Uh, it, was, it was just, it opened my eyes, it opened my mind, it opened my heart and my spirit. And there was so much stuff in there that I wish I had read and understood so much earlier in life. It was, it was tremendous, the best way I can put it, I guess. So, um, so then I started, that helped me with my interactions with this men's group. And I learned a lot from them. There was a mix of people, people just like, you know, there were some guys in there just like me, kind of had the same kind of experience. There were guys in there who accepted Christ when they were, before they were 10 years old and stuck with them. And it was a real relationship with Christ at that time. Had a, that relationship all that time. I envied them so much. But I got my own way in my own life. But anyway, but um, so um, I came to know Christ during that men's Bible ship, but men's, uh, it was a Bible study, really. He, I think he told me it wasn't a Bible study because he you knew I, I wouldn't want to go to a Bible study. <laughs> but that's what it was. And it was fantastic. It was wonderful. And I came to Christ, and what that did for me 
is it made me realize that I am fallen and my humanity, like I said before, my humanity is fallen. And I needed Christ to cover that. Because as much as I tried with my relationship that I had with God, as much as I tried to be good, I could not. I, I could not. As Paul said, the things I, you know, I should do, I would not do or something like that. You know, it was, I just couldn't. I needed Christ to cover me. There was no way I was going to be able to do it on my own. So, um, um, that is my testimony. It took me a long time. I, I can say now that I've been a Christian for 28 years or so. Um, but it took me a long time. I was hard-headed. Still am. <laughs> but I finally got there. And it was the name of Jesus Christ whose power came over me. And when I invoke that name, the power comes through it. The power comes through it. There's no other name like it. No other name like it. So to finish up, I want to read this poem that a gentleman by the name of Isaac Wimberly wrote. And he recited it in a, a music video of uh, Carrie Joby. She sings a song called Forever. And um, in the live version of it in the video, at the end he comes out and he does this poem. And this poem just exemplifies to me my experience. It is my experience in a poem. And I think it's probably, I think a lot of you will agree with it. So I want to recite it. The poem is called, If There Are Words For Him, Then I Don't Have Them. So it goes like this. If there are words for him, then I don't have them. You see, my brain has not yet reached a point where it could form a thought that could adequately describe the greatness of my God. And my lungs have not yet developed the ability to release the breath with enough agility to breathe out the greatness of his love. And my voice, you see, my voice is so inhibited, restrained by human limits, that's hard to even send the praise up. You see, if there are words for him, then I don't have them. My God, his grace is remarkable. Mercies are innumerable. Strength is impenetrable. He is honorable, accountable, favorable. He is unsearchable yet knowable, indefinable yet approachable, indescribable yet personal. He is beyond comprehension, further than imagination, constant through generations, king of every nation. But if there are words for him, then I don't have them. <laughs> you see, my words are few in trying to capture the one true God. Using my vocabulary would never do. But I use words as an expression, an expression of worship to my Savior, a Savior who is both worthy and deserving of my praise. So I use words. My heart extols the Lord, blesses his name forever. He has won my heart, captured my mind, and has bound them both together. He defeated me in rebellion. That definitely has to do with me. <laughs> Conquered me in my sin, also me. He has welcomed me into his presence, completely invited me in. <laughs> he has made himself the object of my sight, flooding me with the mercies in the morning, drowning me with grace in the night. <laughs> but if there are words for him, then I don't have them. But what I do have is good news, for my God knew that man-made words would never do. The words are just tools that we use to point out to the truth. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ, as the word, living proof. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, giving nothingness formation. And by his words, he sustains in the power of his name, for he is before all things, and over all things he reigns. Holy is his name, so praise him for his life. 
the way he preserved in strife, persevered in strife, I'm sorry, the humble son of God becoming the perfect sacrifice, praise him for his death, that he willingly stood in our place, that he lovingly endured the grave, that he battled our enemy, and on the third day rose in victory. He is everything that was promised, praised as the risen king. Lift your voice and sing, for one day he will return to us, and we will finally be reunited with our Savior for eternity. Eternity. So it's not just words that I proclaim, for my words point to the word, and the word has a name. Hope has a name. Joy has a name. Peace has a name. Love has a name. And that name is Jesus Christ. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Amen, y'all. Thank y'all. the Lord. Bless your holy name. 
say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for loving me and caring for me. just want to thank you for this time with you today, Lord. Thank you for the smorgasbord, Lord, the, the banquet table, Lord, that we all participated in, Lord. Thank you so much for you. Thank you for bringing us to yourself, Lord. Thank you that you drew us, and Lord, we just want to praise you. All we want to do is praise you. Lord, I just pray that as we leave this place, Lord, that we would leave with a greater awareness of you, Lord, and that we would leave, Lord, following you, Lord, and being held and carried by you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would continue to nourish us with yourself. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless. Mm. To the only wise God, our Savior, through yes, Jesus Lord. Christ, be honor, glory, dominion, and power, yes, both Jesus. now and forever. So I'll say amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Join us for our reception for our graduates in the back. Yay. Thank you all. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I pray we'll find you Hold it in our hearts. That's what it was. So, so I was and the pray when I was you the find your life. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I was Let like, this be a okay. <laughs> God bless you, sister. Thank when you. When we lose our way. Thank you. Oh, oh. I'm trying to. <laughs> I know, right? Deep us to that place. Anyway, let me get out. No. Oh, I'm going to be. <laughs> well, I and Aaron were going to a Nigerian brunch. Okay. Oh, no. Did you bring your clergy paper? Um, on the 15th, but I know I'm not going to New Jersey. I'm getting better already. Okay. I know. I can feel it. Okay. So. So next time you need me, let me know. Okay, definitely.